when the Buddha called his path of practice a middle way between the extremes of indulgence and sensual pleasure and indulgence and self-torment. He didn't mean that it was going to be a, a neutral feeling. He was offering a different kind of pleasure and a different way of relating to it. The different kind of pleasure is the pleasure of concentration. You have to bring the mind and the body together. And feeling is the glue, feeling of pleasure. Try to be aware of the breath. First try to find some spots in the body where you're really sensitive to how the breath feels. Trying to breathe in a way that feels nourishing there, gratifying, satisfying. And then from there think of the sense of ease spreading throughout the body and your awareness, which is actually already there in the body, connecting to that sense of pleasure. The image that the Buddha gives is of a bathman who in those days would knead water into a, a powder of soap to make a kind of dough that you would rub over the body. Nowadays we think about making bread. You knead the flour and the water together so that the entire lump of dough is saturated, but it's not dripping. In the same way, you want to have a sense of ease going through the body. Think of every cell in the body, breathing in and breathing out, all together in harmony. And as the Buddha said, try to settle in and indulge for a while. But be very careful how you indulge. It's very easy to start wallowing in the pleasure when it gets really good. And then you drop the breath, your mindfulness goes, and then the causes for the pleasure will go, and then you're back where you were before. Or you just drift off into a kind of sleepy state, or into delusion concentration, where everything is very still, very pleasant, but you don't really know where you are. That's a sign that you indulge too much in the pleasure, because actually the pleasure is there to serve a purpose. It's part of the path, and everything you do on the path has a purpose, has a use. And so what are the uses of this pleasure? One is to give the mind a place to rest. When you're doing your work of analyzing what's going on in the mind, there come times when the analysis gets dull. The traditional images of a knife. You use it again and again and again, and it's going to get dull. You've got to stop, sharpen it. Although here the sharpening is different from where you would sharpen a knife outside. You sharpen the, the knife of your mind by getting it very still. I'll let it rest for a while, then you can get back to work. As you come out of the stillness, you may begin to notice things as the mind picks up its activities. And that's an important part of the stillness. It gives you something to compare, a background, so you can compare, compare and notice. When the mind is thinking, what is it doing? What is it picking up? Why? What's the allure? What sparks a particular emotion, a particular thought? When you've been still, it's a lot easier to see it. It's like listening for the noises of the mice in the walls here sometimes. If you want to hear where they are, you have to be very still. You can't be humming to yourself. When you're still, things stand out. Then you use the pleasure as a kind of food. That's one of the analogies the Buddha gives. Your practice is like defending a fortress. You've got mindfulness at the gate, you've got the soldiers with their arms, and the soldiers and the gatekeeper need to be fed. So you feed them with the concentration. But primarily you want to learn how to be with the pleasure and not be overcome by it. This the Buddha calls being developed in body. When we think of the phrase developed in body, we think of somebody with a lot of muscles. But that certainly isn't what the Buddha had in mind. 
why he called it this, I don't know. But he says it's the ability to be with pleasure and not be overcome by it. This is one of the skills you're going to need to deal with the results of past bad actions. It's easy to understand that it would be necessary to learn how to be with pain and not overcome by it, in case your bad actions yield in pain. But if you're going to be overcome by pleasure, you're going to be overcome by pain. The two go together. So the skill of concentration is learning how to be with the pleasure and not get overcome by it, so you can use it properly. This means keeping your focus very carefully with the breath. And learn how to make yourself alert enough so you don't start drifting off. It's usually good once you've had that sense of well-being that comes from the breath and you've spread it around to be very active in moving your attention around the body. Knowing where there's tension here, tension there, release it here, release it there. And you learn how to relate to pleasure in a new way. Usually we relate to pleasure just as something as we want, and when we get it, we gobble it down. But here you learn to use it, and this is where the middle way gets good, where it gets special. Because you're going to be learning how to use both pleasure and pain. Pain, of course, you use as a topic of your analysis, so you can see the Four Noble Truths. And as you use pain, you're going to be learning to use pleasure. So you give yourself a good place to back off when dealing with the pain gets too much. You've got the pleasure to depend on. And in relating to the pleasure and pain in a new way helps you to step back from them and see them as tools when they're useful, when they're not. So you don't just go for the pleasure, 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 wherever you can. You get more discerning. There's a passage in John Lee. He says, you want to get to the point where you can think of pleasure and pain as words that people speak in jest. You don't take them all that seriously. We tend to be very serious about our pleasures. We want to see that the pleasures, even of concentration, the pleasures of fabrication, have their limitations. So you can pass them, because we are practicing concentration, as the Buddha said, for the purpose of letting go. All the factors of the path have that purpose. You develop them, you use them, and you let them go. So it's the same with the pleasure here. You learn how to develop it. You see that it has its uses. You also see that it has its limitations. And it's that willingness to observe the mind and observe its relationship to pleasure that allows you to see those limitations and to go beyond them. We we'll work on those skills of metacognition. We're learning how to observe the mind from a certain distance. And you'll find that your relationship to pleasure and pain are the really big issues in learning how to get a sense of distance. There are a lot of things in the mind that we can observe very easily, but we're not very good at observing our relationship to pleasure or our relationship to pain. To so the practice of concentration, when you make it right concentration, in other words, with a lot of alertness and mindfulness and ardency, is a skill for understanding your relationship to pleasure and pain and to weaken their hold so that you can find something better. <laughs>